Hello and welcome to Pluralsight. I'm James D. Murray and in this course we will be having a look at many of the tools included with Kali Linux that are useful for performing forensic examinations of digital media. Yeah, that sounds pretty fancy, I know, but it basically means that we will be learning how to find, extract, and analyze digitized information that is located inside of other digital information although we may not know what that information is or even if it's there. The digital forensics tools we will be using for this course are all supported by the Kali Linux environment. So let's get started. As I said, in this course we will be covering the digital forensics tools available in Kali Linux 1.1.0. Specifically in this course, we will be looking at the tools used for making and manipulating images of digital media, including DD, DC3DD, DCFLDD, EFW Acquire, and GUI Imager. If you are using a later release of Kali, everything in this course will still apply. We will also learn how to identify digital media using cryptographic hashing tools available on Kali, which includes the Linux Sum Tools, Raw Hash 2, and the Deep Tools. Both imaging and hashing are essential for working in digital forensics, and Kali has all the tools you need to do both. In this introductory module, I will be giving you brief intros into Linux and Kali Linux, Linux security distributions, and I'll talk just a bit on digital forensics for IT people. These intros are not meant to be complete, but they will cover some things you should know about Linux and Kali Linux, and especially if you are thinking of a career in digital forensics. If you are looking for a course in computer forensics, then you found it. The term digital forensics implies that the target of our forensic tools will all be information in a digitized form, not just information associated with computers. The two terms are often used interchangeably, but digital forensics is definitely the more modern term. So as I said before, let's get started. This course should be of interest to people who are forensic examiners and want to know what tools related to digital forensics are included in Kali Linux and how to use them. Also, IT people who need to use digital forensics tools to perform information discovery, recovery, and analysis as part of their job. And people who are interested in getting hands-on experience with digital forensics tools in preparation for taking a certification exam or investigating a possible career in digital forensics. So this Pluralsight course is about the digital forensics tools included in Kali Linux. But realize that Kali contains over 600 open source tools used for security testing, analysis, and discovery. This makes Kali a very popular distribution of Linux used by many IT professionals. Kali contains tools useful not just in digital forensics, but tools also used for network and application penetration testing, information gathering, hardware hacking, vulnerability analysis, and tools for performing many different types of offensive network exploitation and attacks. You can check out the complete listing of Kali's tools at tools.kali.org. Kali is also an excellent platform for building your own mobile or desktop forensic workstation. You can install practically any Linux-based tools that you need or write your own using Kali if you are a programmer. Kali is open source, and the complete source code repository used to make Kali is available at git.kali.org slash gitweb. Every tool included with Kali has its own licensing, so be sure to check the manual page for each tool to discover what licensing restrictions, if any, pertain to a tool. I think you will find that most of Kali's tools have no restrictions on their proper use. Oh. Did I mention that Kali Linux and all of the tools it contains are completely free to use? You may consider that important. I certainly do. Well, this course attempts to cover a lot of useful information, but unfortunately there just isn't enough time or space to cover absolutely everything you need to know to get the most out of this material. So I'm going to assume that you already know, or will learn later, a few things useful for using this course. This course will not provide detailed instructions on how to use the Linux operating system, nor does it provide a full tour and complete demonstration of Kali Linux. 
If you are at least a casual Linux or Unix user, you should be able to pick up enough of what I am demonstrating to follow along on the command line of your own Kali Linux system. However, if you are completely new to Linux and find what I am doing in this course confusing, I suggest having a look at the other Learning Linux courses available in your Pluralsight subscription. This course will also not provide instruction for performing a full installation and configuration of Kali Linux. I will give you a quick overview of how to run Kali from a live CD and a pre-installed Windows VMware image, but not on how to fully install Kali on a hard disk or in a virtual machine. As I said, Linux installation information is available in other Pluralsight Linux courses. This course does not provide a detailed overview and explanation of digital forensics. Throughout this course, I will be providing information on specific concepts used in digital forensics, such as disk imaging and cryptographic hashing, but by no means do I attempt to provide a complete and detailed background in the academic science or the legal aspects of digital forensics. The content of this course helps you to use Kali for learning practical digital forensics techniques by application and not by theory. Oh, and I will not be demonstrating all of the forensics tools available in Kali Linux. For the sake of time and usefulness, I have decided not to demonstrate in this course those tools that I feel are the least useful, too complicated, or simply outside of the needs of typical digital forensic work.